Okay, I'm pretty bored at this point. And quite frankly, I haven't done much of my channel while well, since this year's going by so pretty quickly. So today, I've decided to do what any other Thomas fan has done in the past. A ranking video! And for this ranking video, I've decided to do a ranking of Hornby's Thomas and Friends models. Because, well, Hornby has produced a lot of great Thomas models for almost 33 years now, up until 2018 where they officially discontinued the whole range. Well, technically they discontinued the line in 2014 at first, but then it was brought back in 2015 with updated models, and then discontinued in 2018. So, yeah. But despite this, the line at the very least had a good long run, and Hornby at the very least did their best with this line of model trains. One of the most unique features about Hornby's Thomas range is that they try to base every character off their real life bases, railway series, and TV series counterparts. Well, mostly every character. Okay, I'll admit Hornby's range isn't exactly perfect, and looking back, there were a couple of models that were just bad and uh, questionable. And it's mainly because of the tooling they use for characters like Emily. Whether it's due to their basis not existing in double O scale, or if it was just because Hornby was just being lazy. But not all of them are bad, and so today, I thought we'd take the time to go over every model, set, and building that Hornby has ever made. And just to clarify, the only things that I won't be ranking in this range are the Quackort engines because they're just the normal range but made to be more toy-like for kids. Alright, enough said, let's get on with the show, and we'll start with ranking the characters. And to start things off, we'll take a look at two of the worst models made by Hornby, which are Edward and Emily. <laughs> yep, these two are no doubt Hornby's worst models, as they are not accurate to their real-life counterparts or even the Railway series and the show. I'll admit there are some good details on these two, such as Edward's faces on his old and updated models. They both have a rather model and CGI look to them. And as for Emily, it would probably have to be the inside of her cab, her safety valve, and her buffers. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about these two models. Next up we have Diesel, Airy, and Bert. Like Emily and Edward, their models are not accurate to the real life basis the class awaits. Instead, Hornby used this type of tooling for the three diesels just repainted to look like Thomas characters. There are still some good details on them like their faces. Diesel has this nice, menacing snarl that looks almost accurate to this face from the model series. Unlike Bachman's Diesel, while still great, has this more happy expression from the CGI series. As for Aryan Bird, their faces, well, not technically their faces, are also neat because their faces were based on two of Splatter and Dodge's faces, compared to Bachman, who gave their Aryan Bird the same face. Next, we have Dart, one of the more weirder models in my opinion. Dart's weird because he was the only CGI character that Hornby ever made. Hornby never made any other characters like Den or Belle or Flynn, they only made Dart. And to me, it makes him seem out of place compared to all the other characters. I do like his face though, and Hornby at least gave him the right livery too. But like a few other characters, he is not accurate to his real life bases and his CGI render. Instead, Hornby used this generic looking overall diesel as his tooling. And because of that, he's too long, he's too big, and he has side rods. A very weird model indeed. Now we have Spencer, an engine who is based on his real life counterpart. I don't hate the Hornby Spencer, but he has a few minor flaws. Like while Hornby did base his model off of his real life basis, the A4s, as well as the fact that his class actually exists in double O scale, the tooling they use for Spencer is the one with the double chimney instead of a single chimney. Also, his wheels and back of his tender are black instead of grey like the rest of him is, and his face doesn't cover the whole smoke box compared to the Bachman Spencer's face. 
Overall, Hornby Spencer is not a bad model, but he could be better. Next, we have Duck. Like Spencer, he is based on his basis, the 5700 Panther tanks, but he still suffers from a few flaws, such as the gray face and running board. And he's a lot bigger compared to the Bachman Duck. Other than those flaws, he's not that bad, but still not that great. Next is Toby, the first model from Hornby who isn't based on his real life bases, nor does he use an existing tooling. He is completely scratch built. He does at the very least look very close to how he looks on the show. But the biggest problem with Hornby Toby is that he's too big, he's too tall, he's too long, and he can't even fit under any roofs or tunnels. Also, he has this weird neutral expression compared to the Bachman Toby, whose face is way more happy. Other than that, he's not too bad. Next we have Bill and Ben, another pair of twins who are also scratch built. Like Toby, these guys aren't too bad and are very close to the show as well. But like Toby, they suffer from being way too big compared to Bachman's Bill and Ben. And they both have the same face. The only way you can tell these two apart is by looking at their nameplates. Here's James, another model like all the other models who is not based on his real life bases. He instead uses this model as his tooling. But compared to Emily and Edward, it doesn't make him look too bad. And he actually looks pretty decent. He has an open cab for a crew to fit in. He has more details on his tender. And his face is almost accurate to the show compared to Bachman James's face. And I'll admit, his newer model doesn't look too bad either. Next, we have Gordon, who like James is also pretty decent, but is a bit flawed. He is based on his real life bases, just with a tender that's pretty much the same as Edward and James's tenders, which to be honest looks kind of small compared to the rest of Gordon. Also, his face, oh, his face on his older model was way too dark, but this was thankfully fixed on his newer model, which also looks pretty good. Next, we have Henry, who is probably the best out of the original Steam team, to be honest, as he is based on his bases, the standard Black 5. He has the right livery, he has good details on his tender, and pretty much everywhere else for that matter, and his face is super accurate both on his older and his newer model, which both look very close to his model series and CGI counterparts. And speaking of his newer model, his newer model was updated to be engine powered. That's neat, although I wish the same could have happened to Edward, Gordon, James. Moving away from engines, we have Birdie, the only non-rail character to be made by Hornby. And I'll say he looks pretty good, and is actually better than the Bachman Birdie to be honest. He has his driver on his front window, and people on both sides of him. And, unlike the Bachman Birdie, he has the grill part of him. On top of that, Hornby Birdie is also motorized, so he can run on layouts. Really nice. Moving back to engines, we have another good model. The Flying Scotsman, the Thomas version. I don't really have much to say about his model. He's just a normal Hornby Flying Scotsman with a face on it that, to be honest, doesn't look like his face in the Railway series. But other than that, I think he's still a good model, and he has some nice details. Next, we have Percy, who was the first model from Hornby to be made scratch-built. The only difference is that unlike Toby, Bill, and Ben, Percy is actually good, as he looks very close to his model series counterpart, compared to Bachman's Percy, who is based on promotional art. The only issues he has is that he's too big, though not as big as Toby, Bill, and Ben. He's too long, his whistle was painted on his cab, and for a long time, his riding board was green instead of white. Thankfully though, in 2015, this was fixed on his newer model, which was given a white running board, as well as a brighter paint job, and a new face. And now we finally come to Thomas, whom, being the main character of this franchise and this line of merchandise, has had the most changes compared to all the other characters. For starters, one of the most unique things about Thomas is that he's one of the most accurate models in this line. It's due to the fact that he's based on his basis, the LBSCE2s, and has remained that way consistently for years. 
Another unique thing about Thomas is his face. His face has also had the most changes throughout the whole range. Like, I love how in the 80s, Thomas's earlier models had faces that were very close to the Railway series, but then was later changed to a face that almost looked like the TV series. Although at first, the face apparently was a bit dark, but then was lightened up a few years afterwards. And then there was this great discovery set which had a Thomas with weathering and a blushing and shocked face. And then there's his updated model with his newer face. And then other changes made to his model are that he used to have backlighting just like in the series, but this was removed. He also used to have traction tires, but these were removed too. And as for his newer model, he gained brighter paint, a new face, and best of all, a white running board, just like Percy. And in 2016, he was given a lamp that was based on the ones from the series. Nice. Sticking with Thomas, we also have his celebration variant. This was made to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the franchise. It's not much, it's just an updated Thomas but with a more metallic finish just like what Bachman did with their Thomas. Other than that, this is honestly still another great model and a very valuable collector's item in my opinion. And now we come to this Thomas, which is another weird model. In the 90s, Hornby apparently made this rather strange model of Thomas with an inaccurate over o wheel configuration. It's also not based on the E2s, it's instead based more closely on the TV series. A very weird model, and yet I kind of like it to be honest. It may not be 100% accurate, but it still looks very close to the show. I also find it interesting, when Hornby officially stopped producing this Thomas, its molding was reused for generic 040 tank engines. Such as an LBSC tank engine, a Collector's Club tank engine, a Coca-Cola tank engine, and as of now, a Beatles tank engine. Very weird, but not bad in my opinion. Next we have Oliver, who is another great model made by Hornby. Compared to Bachman's Oliver, who's based on the CGI series, this one is the more superior of the two, as he's more based on his real-life bases, his railway series counterpart, and his model series counterpart. The only two flaws with his model are that his handrails go into his forehead, and his back wheel is painted black. But other than that, he's still a great model, and I can see why lots of people want him. Next is D7101, aka Bear, a very exclusive character of this range. Bear is also another great model because he is consistently based on his class, and he has a few good details such as his face. And what makes him so exclusive is that he was the only railway series character to be made by Hornby. Hornby never made any other railway series characters like Wilbur or Sixteen or Pip and Emma, they only made Bear. But nonetheless, he's still a great model. Next up we have D261, another great model, though he isn't accurate to his basis. He apparently uses a class 37 tooling instead of a class 40 like he's supposed to be. But he's still a great model, and his base is very accurate too. Now we have the goaded model of this range, Stepney, and a model pretty much everyone's trying to get. He, like a few others, isn't completely accurate to his basis, as his model is made from a later terrier molding with sandboxes. But I think he makes up for it by having so many great details and a very accurate TV series face. And now for the last character of Hornby, Murdoch. Murdoch is no doubt the best character that Hornby has ever made in my opinion. He's accurate to his class, he has so many great details, such as the silver buffers, even though he never wore any on the show. And he has one of the best and most accurate faces that looks just like this one face from the show. And that does it for all the characters. Now we will take a look at the rolling stock. <laughs> 